when it comes to turning on the light, although it seems pretty much instantaneous, the actual electrons moving the wire are not travelling at the speed of light. In fact, the electrons which are travelling down the wires are actually moving incredibly slowly, and it might be in the order of millimetres or centimetres per second. So this is a model of what it's a bit like inside a metal. We've got this kind of metal lattice, which is jiggling slightly, it's vibrating, and around it we have these free delocalised electrons which are moving sort of randomly in all directions. Now, as soon as you apply uh, a charge to one end, perhaps maybe a positive and a negative, uh, these charged particles, if they're electrons, they will tend to be repelled from the negative end and start to move towards the positive end. And it's this kind of net flow of charged particles which we're really interested in at the moment. So here I have some uh, thick copper wire. And what I'd like to consider is a small section of this which has a current uh, flowing through it. So here I have a diagram of a cross-section of this piece of wire. Now there's a few things to note. First of all, it has a cross-sectional area A, which is equal to pi d squared over 4. There's also a certain length of wire, which we're going to call L. And flowing through this wire, there's going to be a certain current, which I'm going to call I. So this current is due to the flow of charge carriers. Okay, now uh, I know in one of my previous videos I had these uh, people here, or it could just be the electrons. Now effectively, there's gonna be a certain amount of these charge carriers per unit volume. And I'm gonna call this little n. And all of these individual uh, charge carriers, they all have a certain charge. Now if they're electrons, uh, then it might be that the charge on each is a value of E, where E is this fundamental uh, charge, the kind of the smallest value, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And if we think about all of these things which are moving through, they're all going to have their own velocity, which we're going to call their drift velocity. Now, again, if we keep everything in SI units, then, uh, you know, so number of charge carriers is just a number, um, charge is coulombs, length in metres, current in amps, then the drift velocity should come out with the units of metres per second. So it follows from this that the volume, and I'm using a big V here rather than a small V for the velocity, is equal to the length times the area. And therefore, the number of free electrons or things that can carry charge is equal to the volume times the, the, den the charge density, which is equal to uh, NLA. And therefore, this means that the total charge which is free to move is equal to the number of charge carriers in total multiplied by the individual charges on each one, which is NLAE. Now the next thing you need to know is that the time it takes for the charge to leave this bit of wire to all flow out of one face is equal to L over V. Why is that? Well, uh, we can use the equation uh, speed equals distance over time. We can rearrange to say that uh, the time is equal to the, the distance divided by the speed. And therefore the time for all of this charge to basically move along and move through this section uh, is equal to T, which is equal to L over V. Now we know that Q is equal to IT, that the charge is equal to the current multiplied by time, and therefore the current, I, is equal to Q over T. Now we've already said that the total charge which is free to leave is equal to NLAE, and also that the time it takes is going to be equal to L over V. Now what we can see here is that we've got a couple of Ls, uh, and if we do the maths, we can sort of uh, get rid of the L's here and we bring the V up to the top and we say I is equal to N A E V. Let's write that out once more. Uh, we can say that the current in a wire is equal to the number of charged carriers multiplied by the cross-sectional area of that wire multiplied by the charge in each individual charge carrier multiplied by the drift velocity. Uh, and I often remember this as I nave and you can rearrange this to find out the drift velocity. And when it comes to doing equations the biggest thing that you've got to look at is making sure that the area that you calculate is appropriate. Remember that the area is equal to pi d squared over 4, or pi r squared, and that's kind of a bit of information that you might get given in the question. And this velocity here is often very, very low, and it's in the order of millimetres per second, or perhaps centimetres per second.